Hello there, and welcome to this. Uh, yeah, welcome to my studio. Welcome to this uh, live live watercolor uh, demonstration on on YouTube. I thought we'd do something a bit colourful today and uh, give us a chance to get some uh, nice bright watercolor painting happening. Uh, please do ask any any questions in the comments. I'll I'll try and answer them as we go through the uh, through the demo. Um, this is live, so obviously things can kind of go wrong. So let's see what happens here. Um, just want to quickly mention um, there's never been a better time to get started in 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 uh, watercolor painting because obviously, well, there's just never been a better time. We're kind of stuck in the house a little bit maybe at the minute, so uh, this is a good uh, opportunity to learn something new. And uh, my website, which is watercolor.tv, is the place to do that. We're joined by Mr. Snow Leopard at the back here, which is one of my watercolor paintings, who's kind of filling this gap here. Um, the paper that I'm actually using for this um, painting is um, a cotton paper. Okay, so it's a cotton paper, it's 100% cotton, and it is. It's branded as Matthew Palmer's watercolor paper. It's a it's a quarter imperial in the size, which is about average. I mean, any size will do. You could do a smaller picture if you want to as well. And you can see I've stuck it to a piece of wood. This is a board I've had for quite a while, but just a piece of cardboard would be sufficient for this, really. No sketching. I'm just going to go straight in with the paint on here, which is which is nice. Um, just want to mention the materials and the colours that I'm going to use for this. First of all brushes, I want to keep this thing very simple so very little brushes indeed. We've got uh, three brushes here, we've got a size uh, a size 20 round brush, that's a quite a large brush, you can hold it close to the camera you can see it's quite a big brush. We've also got a, a size 10 brush round and a, a size 6 brush and to be honest a large, medium and small brush will probably do you for any watercolour painting. We don't need much at all. Um, I've obviously got some water for watercolour. I've got some kitchen paper here, the plenty. Now I'm uh, I'm painting this on an easel but this is something that you don't need to worry about really. I wouldn't bother using easels. Um, I, I just go straight in and sort of use the uh, table or something like that and um, I've got all my colors in my palette here now I'm only going to be using a few colors I've got a bright yellow of some kind this one is natural yellow light and we'll use that uh, we've got a red this is natural red uh, we've got a blue this is natural blue so three primary colors now you could use cobalt blue ultramarine blue you could use um, crimson for the red or Elizabeth Crimson, you could use cadmium yellow, and I've got a bright red, I mean this one's called poppy red, but you could use cadmium red for that as well, so I've, I've squirted bits of those into the palette, and I'll I'll show you the palette as I go through. You could just simply use a plate for this if you want to keep things simple. Um, so I, I'm going to start off by simply wetting the paper um, top to bottom here, so I'm just going to put a wash of colour down on this one. I'm just going to make this thing up as I go along, and that's a nice way of working in watercolours. So, um, yeah, you know, please do ask any questions in the comments. And for those people that are interested in joining me this Saturday, the 28th of um, March, we're doing a live uh, watercolour workshop where you can paint along at home. So if you go onto the website, which is all the w's.watercolour.tv, you'll be able to see that there. And uh, yeah, you can simply join in and have a go at painting. So. So I've wet the paper through, throughout. Now, because I'm using cotton paper, this thing does absorb the water. So the first coat of paper that goes on is simply going to absorb. Then what you want to be thinking about doing is you want to be thinking about um, giving it a second coat of water, which is going to be enough for doing the sky and various things like that. So a nice bright sky is what I'm interested in at this particular stage. Now, get yourself into the habit of cleaning the brush, wiping off the excess, and shaking off those drips. For some reason, the men do that better than the women. I don't know why that is. Plenty of practice, I reckon. And let's take a very pale yellow. This is the light yellow. It could be cadmium yellow. 
looks more green on the screen, it always does, but it's a nice vibrant yellow. And that's going to go across the bottom of the sky. You cut, sort of sweeping it in, almost conducting an orchestra. I'm going to bring this thing right down towards the bottom here. I'm going to take and make it gradually make the paint thicker as we move lower down, okay? So I'm making the colour that little bit stronger as we move lower down here. So I'm literally taking the paint quite deep here, popping it across the base. Clean my brush really well. Again, I'm doing the thing where I'm shaking off the drips and doing all that business as well. Beautiful. And then we're going to take the blue, natural blue, or you could use cobalt or, or ultramarine blue here. Pop that across the top. Pop that across the top, but still sticking with the same brush. Let it work down until it meets the yellow. Now obviously it's going to start to go a bit greeny, that's fine, because we want to create some distance in this thing, some distant hills. So we'll let that work its way down. And then I'll take that blue and pop it with the yellow so we get in more of a green. Now on the workshop on Saturday, for those who are joining me, we shall be doing that at a much more step-by-step -step pace because that's designed for us all to paint along. This is a demonstration, so just to show you how enjoyable watercolour painting is. Now I'm bringing the yellow and the green together so basically I'm mixing on the paper here which is a nice way of actually working to be honest. Now I want to make that green a little bit stronger so I'm taking more yellow, thicker yellow and a touch more blue so you can see I'm basically making quite a rich green here, a bit more yellow if we need to. I'll pop this in the corner, the paper's still wet, notice the paper's gone a little bit buckled that is perfectly normal for watercolour paper to do that, it will flatten especially something as nice as a cotton surface like this. Now as I work this up towards the back, I'm also going to start to create some slightly hazy, let's think of a nice warm summer's day, slightly hazy misty hills. Can we see where we're going with this? So that little bit of a hill starting to come into play there. You can be as creative as you like with that. But I love how this thing stays damp, so it's giving me that impression of distance which is a nice way of achieving a slightly out of focus, misty effect. And as this thing starts to dry, you can put more and more into this if you want to, which is, which is great. I want to take a bit more yellow actually, over the top of the green and pop it in this corner. So it's a little bit, little bit deeper in consistency over this side as well. So basically making this thing nice and strong. And then I'll pop that away. Now, the one colour that I didn't pop in my palette was the bright red. Now I'm using a, it's called poppy red, but you can just use cadmium red, which is a common colour, or another one is vermilion, vermilion, which is a colour which is a nice bright kind of vibrant red. Now I want to take the um, size 6 brush here, I'm going to take the red, pop it just over here somewhere, like so, you can see it's a, a nice kind of, a nice warm orangey red really. I'm going to wipe off the excess and I'm basically, while this thing's a bit damp, I want to tap this against the paper. Can you see the little splatters it's creating? We can get a bit closer in to show you this actually as well here. So a few little sort of splatters going in. If I turn the board this way as well, we can do this working our way up the page as well, okay? So basically Stippling. Let's just come back a little bit with the camera here so we can see what we're doing, okay? Now obviously I, I'm trying not to do too much over the sky So if you wanted to protect that with a bit of kitchen paper, then you could do quite easily It wouldn't really matter to be honest, but I'm just gonna tap it. It's just having a bit of fun really So you can see where I'm kind of getting the idea of the poppies from. Let's turn this thing back the right way Now as this thing starts to dry off, I can do more and more of this, more splattering um, Making the paint a bit thicker, a little bit deeper and my advice is always to splatter in the direction that you're pointing. So if you turn the board to suit, it's going to give you that nice impression. And literally, I'm sort of doing it against the, the finger. Now, that's keeping this pretty clean because I'm pointing the brush there. I've got red on the ceiling of the studio. We can live with that. Um, but I'm basically splattering around with the red paint. And I'm being nice 
and vibrant with this red. I mean, you can see the colour's quite... It's not running all over the place, is it? You can see that. It's kind of where it needs to be. And that's quite important there. So a few little splatters. Again, still continuing with the same thing. Getting in there, getting more splatters. Splatting around, working my way down here. I've got a few bits in the sky. We can turn those into birds. Let's turn this this way here. And then let's pop in a few more larger spots. Now all this is giving me foreground poppies here. So I'm basically putting little tiny brush strokes on. Let's get the camera a little bit closer in again so we can see what's happening here. So basically I'm just kind of dotting and spotting. And I'm making these dots smaller as they disappear off into the distance. So really putting time into the corners of the watercolour here. Little, little brush strokes of this red. Red is a much more vibrant colour than the green, so this colour is going to stay put. It's going to be there to stay, so it's going to work really well. Uh, and it's just one of those things that's going to give you that slight interest of uh, foreground. So it's going to pop this thing forward, push the back back, which is uh, which is what it's all about here. So nice kind of dots. Keep sort of walking back a little bit on the picture so you can see this thing from a bit of a distance. It does help. And as you go back towards the halfway point, kind of ease off the dots, make the dots go smaller. So we can see how that's starting to bring it forward. Now, later we're going to create depth and distance in this watercolour as well. That's going to make a difference to the picture. Let's just come back with the camera so we can see all the page. There we go. Marvellous. Now, Continuing as way through here, dotting and dabbing. Quite therapeutic this. Watercolour comes alive when it dries. Um, I'll say that to you now. So it really makes a big difference once it dries. I mean, you can see that that yellow is more yellow now. When it was one time, it was very, very rich, almost a greeny yellow, really. But but now it's it's had a bit of time to soak in. That's when we see the colour for the first time, and that's when it starts to do its thing. All right. So dots and dabs. So tiny little, almost little rows of, of of distant poppies. I mean, we've all seen poppy meadows in the summer. We've seen how kind of vibrant these things actually are. But that's gorgeous. And seriously, with reds, <coughs> yellows, um. Don't be afraid to use the colour quite quite rich, quite deep. Alright, so nice and nice and heavy is what it's uh, what it's all about, okay? So you can see I'm popping these little bits on and spotting and dabbing and dotting. So it's starting to frame this thing up. Now as this starts to dry off, which it will do, it's Get into that stage now. I can feel this. It's not taking off any colour as I tap on it. It's it's kind of staying put. It will um, obviously go flat, and that means we can work more detail into this thing. Marvellous. Now I'm gonna give that a few seconds to dry, um, and any spots in the sky you can either wash the paint out or you can turn them into a few birds, which will which we will do. Um, when this dries off, of course, if you're working along at home, if you're painting at home, you could use a hairdryer to do that, but I'm not using any hairdryers. It makes a bit of a noise on the camera, so we'll leave that off. And um, I'm basically going to go in now and paint some distance in this thing, okay? But just to quickly mention um, a little bit about the website Watercolour TV, folks. If you like watercolour painting, this kind of stuff here, Make sure you check out the membership to the website, all the W's dot watercolor dot TV. Video on demand. Never been a better time to start watercolor painting. Um, you can subscribe for a year, get unlimited access to all the videos, the printable worksheets, and we're doing lots and lots of stuff. Now people are stuck in the house. I'm trying to entertain you here, folks. So make sure you check that out, and um, please do enjoy the um, website because it's there for you to just 
just enjoy and paint along really there's lots of stuff going off and don't forget on saturday we are doing a live a live um uh virtual workshop which you can also check out the details on the website as well we've got a piece of card or paper here uh, we're going to paint in some distant hedgerows on this this thing is almost at a stage where it's just about dry so i can do this all right now i'm going to be using i'm going to be using a a um size 10 brush now i've not used that brush yet so i'm going to mix up a quite a dark green here so we get the yellow and the blue um quite strong now if i just pop a tiny bit of the red in being careful that was the poppy red of course you can see it makes a a deeper almost a sage kind of green i suppose you could say really so a bit of a sage green there quite quite rich in color you can see that there just a tiny bit of water now again notice the colors aren't dripping all right i've got the tissue here i want to dry the brush off a little bit rotate it through your fingers as you do that so you've got that little bit of color on your brush even give it a slight stipple so the brush goes a little bit if we get close in we can see the brush is getting a little bit kind of spiky on the end there that's what we want to try and achieve from the brush okay and we're going to use that piece of paper i'm going to pop that about here somewhere so where you think the hills would kind of finish we'll place that down i reckon about there so probably about here not quite halfway but you know getting towards that sort of mark and then we're going to stipple okay we're going to stipple this brush now people that know about my painting may have come across my tree and texture brush as well which will do this um a little bit easier than using a brush like this um so that's the matthew palmer tree and texture brushes you can get all of those of course um you get them online so i'm stippling and every so often i'm going to change the shape of the stipples can you see it's giving me a bit of a hedgerow so think about this being in the background of the picture this is where things start to make sense with watercolor or any medium you need to spend a bit of time with your painting it because it does grow on you you know i say that and every time i do a workshop i say that paintings grow on us and that's that is absolutely true especially for for landscapes i want to leave a gap there put that over here because i'm going to put a bit of a just off center there i'm going to put a bit of a gate a bit of a gateway there so we'll slip all that in working across Taking it right to the end of the paper. Now I'm going to make that colour a touch darker by just popping a little bit more red into it and then a touch more blue. Now that'll almost take it towards a grey. So the red makes the green go almost brown and adding the blue makes it start to bring it towards a grey. Uh, again, I've, I've just tapped it on the tissue again because basically what I want to do is make sure, in fact, I can just do this here. I just want to make sure that things are nice and dark at the base of this. Now, when we do the workshop on Saturday, we shall be um, zooming in close and showing you all the nice little bits of detail that we're doing here. And of course, we'll be doing it step by step as well, giving you time to work along and ask any questions that you, you want to. So, a nice bit of darkness going across here. Stippling and spotting. So again, I'm just using three colours. If you've just joined us, I can see there's uh, a bunch of new people just just joined us. So we'll say hello. Uh, it's live. It's uh, twelve forty ish here in the UK, and um, we're painting a poppy meadow in watercolours. You know, and it starts to evolve as we get towards these stages. Now at the minute, I've just painted this this hedgerow in here with the size ten. Remember. I'm only using three brushes here, a large one which is a 20, uh, a 10 and a 6. What I want to do now is I'm going to grab a size 6 brush, the one we splattered the, pot the potties, splattered the potties, splattered the poppies and we're going to be using a green again mixed from yellow and blue. So this is natural yellow light, natural blue, but you could use cobalt blue and cadmium yellow. It would give you something similar. I always think a bit of red into that just helps. Not too much because it will go brown if you're not careful. And then we'll do that dry. Dry means 
load it and give it a couple of taps on there before you apply it to your paper now if your brush is like like this one nice and pointy that's going to make a big difference to your painting we're going to zoom in a bit closer here so we can see what we're working on and i want to work in the distance basically and do a similar thing to what i've just done with the piece of paper now you can see where i stippled against the edge here well i want to do a similar thing now all right i want to get some shape on this thing now it's a bit damp so i need to be a little bit cautious but i'm just going to pop that here and again i'll stip all the brush you're going to have a practice on this on the, the scrap paper you can have a stipple in the edge so it's like a tap with a broken bristle now if you want to impress your neighbors you could lightly ease off the height of those as they disappear off into the can you see you've got an, another field kicking in uh we could do one going up here as well just put one little 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 spots and then we'll stop there and I'll fade those off in a minute okay I'm going to do a few more of these put one over here now of course I can alternate between the brushes if I want to do a larger one I've got my large brush handy the 10 so I can do a larger one here if I feel it needs it which I think it probably does here actually so again just dotting and spotting the brush there we go so you can see we're creating this kind of distant hedgerow now we can put as many of these as we like into the picture probably just going to squeeze in one more here actually which i'm just going to pop there back to the smaller brush using the dark green mix here now i want to try and taper that off so it kind of disappears off then i'm going to put the piece of paper away and i'm simply just going to use the number six brush on its own with the color and i'm just going to paint these in i mean you can see if you look close at that brush you can see it's quite pointy so it's a nice pointy brush there which does make a difference you know so we can take these into the distance and it allows me to taper off what i've just painted in all right which is which is quite important to say so we'll get all this coming across here we can create as much distance as we like these are just lines i'm doing i'm putting a few spots around the tops of them for trees and various things let's bring one over here as well so in the middle there we can paint in these these lines dotting and spotting as we go through you can also notice how i'm bringing the lines closer together As I'm getting further back to create even more depth in the watercolour picture. Nice bit of distance coming in here folks and this is going to make a, a scene out of this in my opinion. You know? Again I'm just using three colours remember that so all the time it's just three colours and making sure this thing's creating distance, putting spots in fact if you look close there i put some sheep in the fields can you see the sheep they're about that big the size of a gnat's bottom i reckon so i'm now making use of the point now if your brush is not as pointy as this then obviously get yourself something finer like a size two or something something very something very fine anyway is going to help you create this nice kind of distant effect that we're trying to achieve here the basic rule of thumb when you're painting in these these hedgerows is to bring the lines closer together is to go further back and follow the angle of those hills that you painted in at the beginning you know while the, the background was damp this is it's still damp this paper i mean this is a good sign this is what you want you want paper to be damp you know so it needs to stay needs to stay nice and damp all the way through so it so you get a, a longer time to work, basically. There we go. So we're getting nice and nice and fine. This colour here was the one I was using, which was the grey kind of mix. I want to dilute that colour down. Remember that was the green with a bit more red than a bit more blue. So it's very thin 
colour now. Wipe off the excess. A couple of taps on that tissue which is down here. Let's get a bit closer in again so we can see what we're doing here. And basically I want to paint in some more distance. I want to taper these off into the mist. Again, I'm, I'm just making use of the point of the brush. Putting a few little spots and dots to represent hedgerows and fields and things. And just allowing these things to fade off into the into the background. So I'm using a very fine pointed brush here for that. Same over here as well, in this area. You kind of ease them away as they vanish off. As they go towards the misty, the misty background. So it's creating that kind of haze effect almost you could say. But if we pan across we can see we've got that nice kind of distant sort of dale kind of impression happening there. Let's just zoom back a touch on the picture now so we can see the whole thing. So we're starting to get more depth. Now I want to do a bit more work down here now and bring some more detail into this picture um, so I'm going to be using um, some more greeny colours so yellow blue touch of red always helps I always think because it just kind of kills the harshness of the of the um, the green so I've almost got a shadow green there it's quite a dark green um, and I'm going to use this colour to paint in a bit of a footpath or something coming through the middle of the the meadow here so I'll bring that into play just using water now just water give it a couple of taps and then I'm going to spread this colour over and I'm using water I did tap it on the tissue before I put it on the paper though um, because too much water and you'll create holes in your paint so we don't want to do too much of that if we can help it and then we'll also weave this thing around the corner a little bit here. So it's almost like a sort of trackway through the field, you could say. Hopefully you can see where it's starting to weave its way through there. Again, I'm just using water on the two sides to pull this thing away, to fade it out, basically. So I'm spreading the colour, spreading the paint, so it kind of disappears into the into the background there making sure we're happy with this and I can always revisit the green if I need to there's the greeny colour that's the one that we were using in the the fields and I can pop a little bit extra green into this to give it some texture work it into the paper the paper is still that little bit damp but I'm actually making use of the green of the paper at this point but let's get a bit closer in here again so we can see what we're doing here um, allows me to go in and this paper's got texture so it allows me to work into the paper and allows you to add this nice almost a shadow almost a shadowy texture So I've got two colours, just to summarise in case you're not sure what's happening. This one is green, yellow and blue. Probably more towards the yellow than the blue at this point. This one's a bit of a grey, so it's kind of all three colours really. And I'm sort of dabbing in from one to the other. So if I want to put a shadow on, I can use the colour that's got more of a grey tinge. And I can pop little shadows coming across. On a slight diagonal, it helps to give a sense of depth to the picture. from the edge of these hedge of the hedgerows tongue twister it all sort of diagonal flicks I suppose you could say it's just going to give texture to the to the scene here uh, also pop a few shadows going across this kind of footpath area as well in the form of horizontal lines imagine there's a bit of a road or a trackway that disappears off let's come back a bit so we can see that there we go so a sort of trackway that kind of disappears off into the into the distance there. If you do a line you're not happy with, just get a bit of water on your brush, give it a couple of runs over so it's not saturated. Hold the brush loosely and kind of whiz over the edge a little bit and sort of skim it over. 
so it creates that nice illusion of of depth and it's I'm sort of standing back every so often looking at this thing from a from a bit of a distance the green I was using which is this one here now I'm just gonna make it more yellow I think it needs a bit of brightness so I've added more yellow to the mix you can see that nice kind of colorful uh, green there and just gonna give it a tap here and basically I'm just gonna I want to splay the hairs can we see what I mean by splay the hairs so then sort of pinch it so you remove the color and you pinch the bristle and then that allows you to go in and put little little bits of texture here and there and it's adding this kind of yellow over the top I mean this is the reason watercolor paper has got texture this one's what we call the knot surface and what that means it's not rough and it's not smooth if I zoom in really close you can probably see the the grain of the paper there and you can probably just about you can also see all them red splatters in the sky can't you as well come back a little bit so a nice bit of texture to this thing is is well worth doing so a nice bit of a nice bit of a drag paper's pretty much dry here these sort of things that make the difference on paintings you know this this nice texture we've got a focal point here we can see where that leads us in we can continue at this point as well to come back to the red now the paper's not completely dry but pretty much dry there's the red this one is is called poppy red but you could use cadmium red just a little bit of water is all you need really for this and I could pop in some stronger Stronger poppies now in the foreground of this thing without it looking too regimental that is that's another issue so I'm going to do that then and then what I want to do as well with this picture bear in mind I'm aiming this at beginners so I don't want to make it too complicated and like we said on watercolor.tv all the W's watercolor.tv we do have um, well over 200 videos, about 450 hours worth of tuition on there and um, all levels from absolute beginner to beginner which is what I've put this at right through to people that have been painting a long time want some inspiration so there's never been a better time to work along at home folks so please do check it out. Let's make the red a little bit stronger so the darker red which I mentioned at the beginning which was called natural red which is one of the primary colours I've not really used it much to be honest but I'm just going to pop a little bit of that into this this brighter red which is cadmium red or poppy red or something so you get a bit of a darker red and of course that's going to be good for doing some shadows isn't it and think about it just a bit of a tap and I just want to pop in a few little sort of flicks not a huge amount of those let's get a bit closer in so you can see what's happening there and um, I'll, I'll lift this thing up so you can see basically I'm just popping a few little bits of red into this few little spots and dots here and there just to give it a bit of a bit of a variation but it's interesting once those splatters came into play and um, now we're sort of brushing the poppies in against the dry paper that's when it makes the difference over this side as well put a few little sort of dots and dabs and spots and spots and spits and stuff there you go as you can probably probably see there that's creating quite a nice interesting effect obviously I don't want to put a huge amount of this in because I want to focus the energy more so on on the brighter poppies while I'm close into it, I'll just put that down for a sec but while I'm closer in I want to mix myself quite a strong um, green here so I'm going to take a nice thick blue in fact I want to make a grey actually so a nice thick blue tiny bit of the darker red not much and then the yellow and as the yellow goes into this you'll see it start to go grey can we see that darkness a nice rich strong colour that's the shadow colour folks that's natural grey for those who know what I'm talking about there I'm going to take that colour and then on some of the middle bits of these poppies we're going to pop in some of the dark spots on some of the larger ones because 
you get that bit of darkness and of course that would be the same over here as well it doesn't really want much of that but a little bit of of sort of dark spots here and there with the tip of the number six brush or whatever brush you're using will create the impression of a bit of darkness and also i can use this as well to make sure that things are nice and strong against this distant hedgerow here so a nice rich color let's get close into that so a nice strong darkness is um important here so i can see a clear bottom to these hedgerows and i can take that into the into some of the distant ones if i want to as well um same here as well look so i can really make sure i'm nice and nice and strong nice and rich getting detail in and actually in the center of this thing if we get really close in we could paint in a bit of a gate and an old old rustic fence so i'm just going to use the tip of the brush now for this you may want to be using something a bit smaller okay so if you feel this brush is a little bit too big for you this is the six i'm using but you can see just how how fine that that number six brush actually is using this very rich rich color i want to put a bit of a scale to this i'm going to paint in a bit of a bit of a gateway the old sort of classic sort of five bar gate there with the letter a ring through the center of it there you go it just gives a bit of scale to it and you start to think well actually you know what i can relate to that now you know and that's that's something to mention to you let's just bring the camera down a touch so we can see what's happening around this area because this is where all the detail is and what i want to do there is bring in a bit of a, a few extra bits of fence posts weaving around here again i'm using a, a detail brush for this but whatever works for you at the end of the day and I'm popping in some little little fence post down here which gradually would get a little bit larger to the point where we feel we can let them stop again it will help to take us into picture maybe just one more here and also I can lightly tickle the edge of the footpath with this colour little random spots of darkness coming around there so it's creating a a detail area for the first time on this picture so uh, we do have a course online called the home watercolor course so um, starting right at the beginning for people that are new to this pop in a few little bits of those around here as well and again if I just sort of tap off some of the excess color on the brush I can just lightly tickle the edge of these things to help them become part of the foreground can you see that texture that the paper's got so i'm kind of using this part of the brush sort of the side of the brush rather than that that tip of it that's quite important and while i'm here just making sure that the hedgerows are dark enough where i want them to be dark enough and brushing them into the picture i suppose we could put some birds over these spots Going to be a lot of birds a flock of course it's the classic sort of classic kind of v-shape i suppose really you could actually wash these off with a um a damp brush at a later stage so a few a few birds hanging around in the background there as well so a nice simple picture for you to try at home folks nothing too adventurous here and uh, it's just an interesting new hobby for this brave new world there's a little uh, plug for the iron maiden fans out there i'm just painting in a few extra fence posts here and there there we go marvelous makes a difference and I'm just going to lightly tickle the edge of this footpath as well at the back so you can see where it sort of sweeps around the around the corner there into the distance into them there hills now if you've got any hard lines at the back 
where the hedgerows finish. If you get a bit of water on your brush, you can just brush them away. You can reactivate the colour, basically, um, which is which is quite nice. And I'm just going to pop in a bit of green into the foreground now, so we'll come back a touch here. But we can, if we look back at the whole picture, we can see how that's starting to shape up quite nicely there. Let's come right back on the picture. There we go. So it's, yeah, I mean it's working. It's making a lovely little scene. Just to finish things off, though, I just want to pop in a few little bits of extra darkness across the front of the picture, and then we can call that pretty much a finished watercolor painting. As always, it's the last bits that make the difference. Let's come down to the base here. It's the last bits of the picture that make the difference. So it's important to get these things right. So we're going to make quite a rich green from the yellow and the blue. There it is, that's quite a nice, nice rich green. You can make it as yellow as you like, fairly strong with the colour. And I want to pop in some little bits of green spots nestling within the puppies. So I'm being quite jittery as I do this, quite random as I do this. Nothing too fancy. So I've been talking through this picture and rattling on for about 40 minutes. Um, if I wasn't rattling on and talking through the picture, it's probably a 20, 25 minute watercolor painting. So something nice for you to try at home. So please do give it a go. And please do think about coming along to the workshop on Saturday. Um, it's a virtual workshop details on watercolor.tv. Let's just pop in a few little blades of grasses and things. Let's get close into that so we can see what we're doing here. in the foreground. So I've got the green and I'm just going to do some flicks, little flicks across the front of the picture here. Not a huge amount of these by any means, but just a few little little flicks and you know for the stems of the over this side as well. A few little stems and things for the poppies. Again, notice the difference in how I'm holding the brush, you know, I've got it right close in here. More so in these corners, you know, and then followed by a few spots and dots of the green as well. It all um, all becomes part of the painting at that point. Over this side, you can see I've done the same. Popped in a few little flicks and spots and dabs and things. A few random dots around. The green, even a bit of dry brush. So again, that's on the tissue, taking off the excess and lightly, lightly brushing in between to create that bit of texture. I'm sure you can see that texture going on the paper now. It does help if you press your brush slightly for doing that. You can see it on my hand there, the texture. There you go. So a little bit of extra texture is just a nice way of putting a bit more realism into this thing. Not that we're trying to capture realism because it's painting. Beautiful. So that's a great way of, of uh, creating that little bit of little bit of texture. Now, there's really just one more thing I want to do on this picture, and it's always the last bit that makes the difference. Pop a few little bits of green around here. It's a middle piece. I might just going to turn this thing on the side again. Let's just come back so you can see this. Um, get the camera into play because what I want to just very quickly do is I want to take some of that green now I need to be very careful not to get any on the sky so if you're doing it at home you could protect it but I'm just going to pop a little bit of green splatter around um, you, if, if I zoom in closer you'll see where it's splattering on actually let's just move the camera that way a touch for you so a bit of green and a little bit of gentle splatter again you're being careful not like Mr Palmer you're you're protecting with a bit of kitchen paper or a bit of scrap paper, you're protecting the sky, aren't you? Of course you are, of course you are. But if you point away from it, there's a good chance of it not affecting it, so don't worry too much. And this can go all the way along here as well. It does make a difference. You can probably see the little little green dots everywhere that I've kind of got on. There's a few over here as well. It's, it's one of those things that I always think is quite, it's quite important to sort of think about doing. 
um, on a on a painting. So have a practice with the old splattering. And just to finish off, before I take the tape off, that's always important. Before I finish off, I've got a square brush, this one being a Matthew Palmer lift out brush. Now this is the only different brush I've used because all we've used is three very standard brushes here. A large round brush, a medium and a small, so a 20, a 10, a 6. Lift out brushes, it's part of my range of brushes that I've got. Um, I know a lot of people watching this will have the brushes, but we can use these brushes with a, a damp, a, a dampness, a bit of moisture, but not too much. So what you do is you gently squeeze it out, out, this one's the large one, and it allows me to put some highlights in this thing, and you can use these with a bit of kitchen paper, make sure the kitchen paper is not too wet and it allows you to go in and use the tip of the brush it allows you to wash off a few areas of colour so if I was to do it just below that hedgerow and take the tissue literally and just give it a wipe can you see it puts light into it instantly it brightens it up let me get a bit closer in again so we can see this in a bit more a bit more detail okay over here as well I could pop in some lightness so highlights shadows the two complement each other obviously if you want to really play it play it effective you could actually pop some little highlights on the edge of these these fence posts if you wanted to just a little tap and then a dab with the, the tissue can you see it takes a bit of paint out just a little touch of color comes out let's get let's get closer in again so you can see the little highlights so all these uh all these fence posts that are sort of weaving across the background there's no reason why you can't just pop in a few few highlights with this lift out brush and you simply just tap it with tissue and then you can see it removes a bit of colour so I always I always think it's a great way of adding a bit of light to a painting and of course I could use this in the sky if I was really really sad about some of these red dots these things here I could have a little little play it weakening them as you can see red's a hard color to to remove but a lift out brush is like a watercolor eraser on a stick and it actually puts little little bits of highlights in those clouds in the sky which is actually quite effective on this one actually sometimes things happen for a reason eh? so you can you can add a few highlights to your sky at the same time as, as washing out uh, I'm just going to lighten on the edges some of these feel because once you start lifting out, it gets a bit addictive. Okay, um, you end up getting carried away and washing bits off around your painting. It does make a difference though. These are available on the website Watercolor TV for those who who fancy those. It just basically takes the colour out. You know, it's just really effective way of adding a bit of little light into the picture and because we've been a little bit misty in the background um, it, it's quite nice so I'm just going to lighten the edge of some of these posts here you sort of scrub it three or four times and then you, you press it firmly you can see it takes the light off the fence post brings them out of touch um, there's three different sizes this one being the large there's a small large and extra large on these so if you do like the brushes folks I know a lot of you have them already very popular brushes they are very nice things to uh, to have in your collection they are I'm gonna pop a little bit of light in the gate very fine brush this one it's got a gorgeous tip on it so you can see I popped a bit of light in the gateway there um, and of course if you want to do any light in your poppies you've got the option of just a few little little sort of highlights if there is light and in between because if you've got light and darkness working together see how simple it comes off um, really just comes off just by tapping it you know for a, a split second and then just using a bit of tissue to dab it and you can see it just puts a bit of light in and of course it's non-destructive so if you take too much off which is easy done um, you can just repaint it again you don't have to worry about it being too too precise or anything like that so don't be too concerned about how much you actually take off well I hope you're enjoying this folks because um, it's uh, something for you to 
pass the hours away of being stuck in the home at the minute and, uh, and I guess that's why I'm doing it as well, I suppose for that reason. Just going to pop in a few more highlights around here. So I'll be doing more and more of these folks and uh, don't forget to uh, keep an eye on, on the website Watercolour TV for lots and lots of uh, videos. Let's just uh, get this thing in view so we can see the whole thing because I'm going to take the tape off in a minute which always makes a difference. But I'm just popping a couple of extra highlights around here, giving it a tap, make sure we're okay with all that. Yeah, so that's about a 45, 50 minute painting there folks. And it, so if you're working along at home, remember there was no sketching involved in this, it was literally straight on. When you pull the tape off, pull it away from the picture. It's, it, and it all started off with just a wet piece of nice quality watercolour paper. Um, and it's perfectly paintable with just three colours. And there we go, we can see we've got that wonderful uh, watercolour poppy meadow there folks. And I, I hope you enjoyed that picture and I will see you back on here very soon for more, more watercolour painting. So. Enjoy being at home and uh, see you soon.